In this next demonstration of Combustion 4, you will see how the edit operator allows its users to take advantage and perform basic editing tasks right inside of Combustion. I'll start by importing another piece of footage. So I'll take this clip of a gentleman named Eric DeHaven and bring it into my composite. Eric DeHaven is an extremely talented artist who takes advantage of Combustion's tools to create music videos that I'm sure you've seen on a variety of different channels. First, I'd like to create some transparency for this layer by using an option called Stencil Layer. So on my surface controls, I can use any other layer as the alpha or luma source for this layer. I will choose the matte layer. The key thing about a stencil layer is the footage and the alpha source are independent as far as transformations layer and surface controls. So I can very easily scale this piece of footage down and position it exactly where I want it to be. Now as I said earlier, I'd like to have this clip dissolve into another clip. Instead of stepping out of your compositing package, Combustion allows its users to perform basic editing tasks with an edit operator. Once I apply an edit operator, you will see that my control panels change to the edit operator controls. I'll switch to a two viewport layout where I can now focus the edit operator in one viewport while maintaining my composite in another viewport. Let's take a look at some of the controls we have. We can work in ripple mode, overwrite mode, we can trim the head of this clip, we can trim the tail of this clip, we can create multiple segments by choosing the cut option. All your basic editing controls are right here and available to you. So I'll trim the head of this about 20 frames and then I want to jump to its last frame and let's import another piece of footage from our hard drive. Now I've got a straight cut of two clips right here in combustion. Other basic editing tasks, such as swap edits, are available just by dragging my clip and dropping it on top. And now I'll trim the tail to 20 frames and jump to the last frame. And now I can perform different transitions, such as dissolves, splices, or wipes. I'll leave it at dissolve, and I'll set the duration for my dissolve to be 15 frames and click the insert button. So now I just created a 15 frame dissolve between these two clips all right here inside of Combustion. Keep in mind, though, that these are two independent segments and Combustion's non-destructive workflow continues even at the edit operator level. For example, if I want to add a color corrector to this segment, the Eric DeHaven segment, I can select that and then go to my operators and apply a discrete color corrector. This is the same color corrector from the discrete advanced systems Flame, Flint, and Inferno. The color corrector has four different modules to work on from color, basic, histogram, and curves. We also have the range controls which allow us to control what luminance level will be considered a shadow, a highlight, or a midtone, allowing us to fine tune our color correction. In this case, I could just use my basic controls to increase my contrast and maybe increase the saturation. Keep in mind the adjustment I just made is not affecting this hand clip at all. In fact, let's go back to the edit operator controls and I will focus this hand clip in this viewport and we'll go down to one viewport for right now and let's talk about some of the issues we have. First off, you'll notice that we have these marks on the hand. Whether it's a boom mic, wire removal, or anything you want to roto out, Combustion's paint tools allow you to do this very easily. So I'll select the hand segment and apply a paint operator. When we go to the paint toolbar, you'll notice we have a wide variety of paint controls and tools, such as brushes, lines, outline shapes, rectangle shapes, text, etc. Combustion has always been able to create vector-based objects. New in Combustion 4 is the ability to create these spline objects, which allows the roto artist even more control. I still have control points for the shape, but with the beast splines you have the weighted control over your shape for fine-tuning any roto work or object creation. Now by default, Combustion creates a solid object. Obviously I do not want this to be a solid object, I want to change it to be footage. So with that object selected, I can easily switch its mode from a gradient, reveal, or a clone. When I choose the clone option, I now have a position picker where I can select and pick whatever pixels I want to place inside of that paint object. Now if we start playing this forward, you'll notice that obviously the paint object is not following the movement of the marks on the hand. So let me select the object and go to the tracker tab where I can turn on my position and just make sure that my position marker is where I want it to be and just click the analyze forward button. 
Combustion now will analyze frame by frame the pixels that I used as my reference source and store the data until I turn off the tracker. Once I turn off the tracker, it'll apply that information to the paint object. So if we go back to the frame here and I play this forward, you can see the object is now tracked perfectly for me. Now because of the fact that it is a vector object, we have such sharp edges around it, I want to soften that. Instead of just using feathering though, what I'd like to do is take advantage of the edge gradients. Once again, these edge gradients are technology inherited from Flame Flint Inferno. And there's three different edge gradients that I can choose from. If I choose offset, you'll notice in the viewport, I can now change the offset for the inside or the outside of my object, and I have an opacity slider to create the fall off. I also have an option called in and out, where I can have independent control of the fall off for the inside and the outside of my object. And the last choice is splines. Now, I still have the B spline control of my object, but I also have vector based control of the inside fall off and the outside fall off on an independent level. And all this is obviously keyframable. Now, let's go back and start playing this forward and see if we like what we have. I'm happy with the paint object and the track data and the softness. Now, I want to eliminate this camera movement that I see in the beginning. So, I'll select the hand segment once again. Go to my operators and apply a one-point stabilizer. On the stabilizer controls, I'll get the stabilizer point and position it over an area that I want to remain stable. Now go back to the tracker, turn on position, and just say analyze forward. Also keep in mind that the tracker data, just like the color correction, the edge gradients, the keyer, and the grain management information, can all be exported and imported not only from combustion user to combustion user, but also to discrete advanced systems, Flame, Flint, and Inferno. So now when I turn off the tracker and we go back to the first frame, playing this forward, you'll notice that the footage has now shifted so that the area we selected remains perfectly stable. Now in this composite, where we have our footage inside of a matte area, we're never going to see this black area that is now being revealed. If you're in a situation where you cannot have this visible, where it's not inside of a matte area, very easily go back to your stabilizer controls, and instead of being in shift mode, I can set this to be fit, and combustion will automatically scale the footage, compensate for the stabilized data. Now keep in mind, all the operators that I've been working on have been applied to segments inside of the edit operator. And now if I would like to, I can add an operator to affect all the footage and all the information prior to the edit operator by simply selecting the edit operator and applying a discrete color corrector. Now on discrete color corrector, if I'd like to add a green tint to everything, you can see as we start to play this, this color corrector will affect both the hand segment and the Eric to Haven segment. It will affect the dissolve that we have and all the other operators including the original color corrector and the roto work that we performed. But this is where the edit operator really becomes powerful. At any point if I've realized that I want to change some information such as the dissolve or the in and outs of this, I can very easily select the edit operator, make any adjustments such as trimming the head and the tail of these segments together at one time, I can select the dissolve transition and make any adjustments to that very easily. And everything that we performed prior to this is just updated in our pipeline, eliminating the need to step out of combustion or your compositing package and perform basic editing tasks in an NLE, rendering that out and bringing it back into combustion.